Before going into the room, choose and put on the personal protective equipment you will need, which I will now call PPE. The goal of PPE is to protect you and the patient or resident in the room. When you are putting on your PPE, it is important that you put it on in the correct order. To don or put on your PPE, always start by performing hand hygiene. Next, put on your gown and tie it in place. If a gown is a piece of PPE, you will need to remain safe in the care environment. Next, put on your face mask. If this will be a piece of equipment you will need to remain safe in the care environment. Now, put on eye goggles. If this will be a piece of equipment you will need to remain safe in the care environment. Finally, put on gloves. You will always need to put on gloves and have protective eyewear ready to put on when you are using chemicals that could splash into your eyes. Sometimes you will need to wear additional PPE based on what is happening with the patient or resident. Most healthcare settings use signs that are hung outside of the room to tell you about the PPE you will need. If you have any questions about PPE and what to use and when, please ask your supervisor or the infection preventionist where you work. Start by picking up trash items and debris throughout the room and placing it in the trash can. Once this is done, remove the trash liner from the trash can and place the liner at the doorway. Next, collect loose linen throughout the room and restroom. Do not put linen on the floor as you collect it, but place it in the linen hamper or bag. Be careful not to shake or agitate any linens you pick up from the floor or take off of the bed because this will cause germs to become airborne and pose an infection control risk. Remove pillowcases slowly. While taking the linen from the bed, pull the linen from the corners of the bed and fold the linen upon itself, forming a somewhat self-contained package. When all the linens have been gathered, place the linens in the linen hamper or bag. Remove the linen liner and place it at the doorway next to the trash. The next step is to high dust the room. Be sure to put on protective eyewear so you do not get anything in your eyes. The goal of high dusting is to remove any dust which may harbor germs from any horizontal surface and give the highest level of cleaning for your patient or resident. You should high dust all areas above your shoulder using a high duster. The things to high dust will be light fixtures, vents, and the nearby ceiling tiles or walls, and shelves. You should also high dust the television, but please ask your supervisor about the right way to do this where you work so you do not damage the television. In another part of the training video, you will learn how to clean and disinfect high touch surfaces. Those surfaces that have a high risk of transferring germs because they are touched by many people many times throughout the day. For now, we will talk about how you will damp wipe all surfaces with a disinfectant. Surfaces that need to be damp wiped include the bed. Be sure to clean the rails on both sides of the bed, the positioning buttons, the call light, and then any other furniture in the room, such as chairs, recliners, tables, or countertops. Once you have damp wiped all of these surfaces and all of the high touch surfaces, place your used cleaning cloth in the container or bag on your cart. Before cleaning the restroom, get a new cleaning cloth from your cart. In another part of this training video, we will review all of the steps involved in cleaning the patient or resident restroom. Once you have cleaned the restroom, put your used cleaning cloth in the container or bag on your cart. After cleaning the restroom, you need to remove your gloves, do hand hygiene, and put on new, clean gloves. A rule is that when your hands are not visibly dirty, Alcohol-based hand rub is the best way for doing hand hygiene in the healthcare setting. But if your hands are visibly dirty, you must use soap and warm water to clean them. Now that the restroom is clean, it is time to restock the paper products and put a new trash liner and linen liner in the room. The next step is to dust mop the room. Start at the doorway and work your way along the edges of the room. Move the mop in a figure eight motion, making sure the swipes of the mop overlap so you do not miss any area of the floor. Make sure to pay close attention to corners and edges for dust and debris that will build up there.
The last step in cleaning the room is to damp mop the floor in the area where the patient or resident is and in the restroom. To keep the environment safe and help prevent someone from slipping on the wet floor, always start by placing a wet floor sign at the doorway of the room. Be sure to ring the mop head to remove as much solution as you can to lessen drips. After you ring out your mop, or after you have put cleaning solution on a pre-dampened floor cleaner, if this is what is used where you work, start to mop the floor from the edge of the room and work towards the furthest corner of the room away from the door. Just like with dry mopping, you will mop using a figure eight motion so that the swipes of the mop overlap the entire floor. Make sure to walk your way out of the room by damp mopping as you go so you do not track dirt from your shoes onto the newly cleaned floor. Keep the wet floor sign in the doorway of the room until the floor is dry and it's safe to walk on.